Welcome, cosmic listeners, to a journey unlike any other you've embarked upon. As the vastness of space stretches out before us, so too does the vastness of our own minds. This is where the ethereal meets the extraterrestrial, where inner space meets outer space. I'm your guide, alongside my hosts, Doro and Matt, and you're tuning into the intersection of meditation and mysteries beyond our stars. Picture this, a vast universe, ever-expanding, filled with stars, galaxies, and possibilities. Now visualize our own minds equally deep, intricate, and filled with untapped potential. What if these two worlds aren't as separate as they seem? All right. Welcome to another episode of Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt. I'm Matt, and uh, here with creation coach, life coach extraordinaire, and experienced meditation teacher, Doro. Hi, Doro. Hi, Matt. It's great to be back. I'm excited about this show today. So great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, as you know, I am I consider myself an amateur ufologist and a amateur lifelong explorer, explorer of meditation. And uh, it is, I find you have a lot of interesting thoughts and experience and ideas about these topics. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to discuss them with you. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. But, um, but let's do our, our catch up, right? You, you bring up uh, the latest and the, and the most recent news in aliens. So is, yeah, a good place so, to start, right? So we'll do alien UFO disclosure update. Um, well, the, the current status I believe is still sort of held largely by, uh, well, US, the US Congress is playing a huge role in this. The House of Representatives, they are in a chaos right now because they just kicked out the Speaker of the House, McCarthy, and they're trying to select a new speaker. And this has a big impact on whether the uh, House of Representatives gets a UFO uh, or UAP select committee, which would be a, a special committee with subpoena power and an incredible amount of investigative authority to really dig into this UFO alien cover up and expose it. McCarthy said he was not going to let them do a select committee, but McCarthy's gone now. So now everything's back on the table. Um, if that doesn't happen, there's going to be the other types of hearings seem to be inevitable because there's a small group of just really um, diehard uh, how, you know, representatives in the House that uh, are pushing on this. And they don't seem it seems there's enough people in Congress and the Senate that they're not going to let this go. So it's just a matter of if it, if it gets opened up really fast or slow. And all this is tied with Congress right now because they also they also have to pass this massive bill called the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act that they do every year, which funds the whole military industrial complex, but also has this uh, UFO disclosure language in the law that will completely give authority over the any alien, secret alien program in the U.S. Uh, government or in the United States corporate world, give that power to the executive branch and the president. And so that would certainly be a change. Um, so that's that's kind of the the U.S. perspective on this. There's also those Mexican aliens that are not going. Those Mexican mummies, those yeah. that some people say are nothing. It, it seems they might be something, and so that's still a controversy hanging out there. Um, and then that's you, interesting. Yeah, they they did just look like you know made out of clay or something. So that's interesting that they're actually doing testing on them, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, there's been x-rays. I've seen uh, supposed, you know, radi radiologists look at the x-rays and clearly describe that these do look like complete living skeletons of some sort of animal or being. That's amazing. And then other people say they're lying, that they're dolls created, so. Pretty so interesting, yeah. 
Um, yeah. I think a lot of this is that we just have to cultivate this sense of discretion that, we, you know, how to discern truth from not truth. It's almost like we're being forced to develop our psychic abilities. Yeah. Um, but that's interesting. That's fascinating. Oh, yeah. It's. So, it, it makes me, uh, you know, I just watched uh, Stephen Greer's uh, documentary, CE5, um, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he was he was basically saying that there's a, there's something good happening in Congress. I mean, he didn't he said, we're, well, we're wait and see. But I, I, he had a good feeling about something. So uh, but that was at the time of that filming. So I guess that could have included the whole congressional disclosure process. And um, but but I wonder what else he was referring to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think the real action has been going on behind the scenes in yeah. Congress. At, at some point, um, at some point, enough of Congress. And I think even I think if there's a, a secret force in our government that's been hiding this and doing violent things using secret U.S. military or CIA, I think that group has been under control for some time. Like, I think the 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 good enough people in Congress uh, that want disclosure, that are actually, you know, okay humans, I think they must have t got control of the, the worst parts of the, uh, of the, the secret keepers in our government. Otherwise, I don't think they'd be doing what they're doing so openly. I think they'd be, everyone would be too afraid for their lives talking about exposing these secrets if they were still, if the the bad guys were still going around assassinating people. Um, I mean, Stephen Greer said no one has been killed since 1993 to by the secret keepers. And that is the year I believe Bill Clinton won the White House. So it might be that was a tr changing point where they got full control of the CIA and maybe were able to at least box in the ones that seem to have uh, done some assassinating over the years. And, and Stephen Greer has even talked about some of that. So you you think that they kind of are getting the CIA under control? Because I, I yeah I haven't heard much about that. Um, I just think they may have gotten the assassination branch of the CIA that they used to <laughs> kill possibly Kennedy, both Kennedys, possibly Marilyn Monroe, possibly this guy named Forrestal who is listed in the early Majestic Twelve documents. He's he died falling out a window mysteriously. Um, it's that, and then Bill Cooper, you know, killed by IRS agents who also did a lot of talking about M Majestic 12. These are all deaths that seem to me to be highly, highly likely to be connected to the secret keepers. And it, you know, if you're the, if, if say Bill Clinton got elected in 93 with the intent of figuring out just those five murders, I think he could have identified who in the CIA was doing it and maybe stopped them, at least from doing that assassination type violence with US assets uh, well that's mm -hmm. fascinating so going back to to mccarthy do you think he was against disclosure is that part of the picture i, I just think he wasn't a hero of it you know it, to be in congress and be in favor of disclosure you have to have an incredible amount of courage because they they have to see that any you know that in the past presidents have been possibly murdered to keep this secret and and i think they've been just you know they're, they're bribed you know the the secret keepers have access to probably black rock and trillions of dollars so they would they would just bribe congressmen so why would McCar mccarthy didn't get to be speaker because he was a good guy trying to save humanity right oh where'd you go matt i think you got cut off okay yeah we yeah, so uh, we just had a technical malfunction. I was in the middle of uh, talking about, uh, I think McCarthy, but uh, secret keepers and Clinton, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, so we're going down a speculative. I mean, it's one of my favorite things to try to map out who in Congress and who in leadership is seems to be clearly on the side of disclosure, and who seems to be suspiciously on the side of not disclosure. Um, so that's a fun 
fun topic. But I think in the end, everyone has is going to have to jump on side humanity. I mean, who's going to stay on the side of the aliens once this really comes out? You know. Well, that that's big. Talk more about that. What do you mean? Who's going to be on the side of the aliens? I mean, once it becomes exposed at a minimum that Lockheed Martin and Raytheon have somehow been, you know, in cahoots hiding alien secrets possibly working with evil aliens i mean once that is exposed what humans are going to stand up and say you know actually i'm going to stick on the side of the bad guys in this story i'm gonna i mean no elected person in congress is gonna they they're all gonna have to say oh this is horrible humans have rights i mean i mean but that's why i think it's like it's it's kind of obvious when a congressman now is like uh, like Mike Turner from Ohio. He's the congressman who is in charge of the area that has Wright Patterson Air Force Base, where Lockheed Martin Skunk Works is located in the Air Force Base, and has everyone seems to know that they have alien craft and they've been in on this. But and Congressman Mike Turner is one of the only congressmen standing up and trying to fight disclosure and trying to keep them uh, keep this quiet. And it's, it's just so obvious and transparent that he is in the pockets. Maybe he might not be like morally bad. They might just be blackmailing him or with money and other threats. I mean, I think a lot of congressional people are just obeying the masters who have gotten them to where they are and who control them. So when, when you're uh, talking about the aliens in terms of the military, um, are you talking about like the the evil aliens working in cahoots like the reptilians and all that or um yeah i i just feel like we, we uh it'd be good for the listeners so that we're all on the same page about good aliens and bad aliens and um so what yeah. you feel like the bad aliens might be part of what the majestic 12 and uh the military com uh you know secret keepers and all that what well your... i i agree i don't know that bad aliens are is the right word i don't you know and i don't really know what what these groups are it seems there are definitely um it seems there's definitely some group with super high advanced technology so advanced that they would seem like an alien civilization to us. I mean, there's a chance it's nothing but humans all the way down. And all of these, you know, supposed different alien species are just a something they're just fooling us. They're deceiving people. To, I mean, who knows? It just seems there's definitely Majestic 12 seems to be the name of the human council that Eisenhower formed. That's probably the closest thing we have to the name of the secret government that's been I th maybe largely in control of earth and i guess this this actually gets to the question that i i mentioned in the pre-show to you that i really wanted to talk about who who represents humanity to alien civilizations like who legitimately on earth i mean should the aliens if there's aliens you know from other planets of any sort if they arrive today or they arrived 100 years ago who should they be recognizing as our leaders and I think, you know, there's a whatever the a best answer to that is, the, I think the current answer is they've been recognizing this Majestic 12 group as somehow an authority. And this Majestic 12 group is corrupt, like any group of superpower humans would be. And does that make the aliens complicit in responsible for any of the evil? All these are they somehow... I mean, so there's that whole question. And then there's a question of if there are other uh, non-human species sharing Earth with us, living inside the Earth, that might be a separate, uh, who knows what they're like, who knows what, yeah. that's the theory of the reptilians. And it seems mm -hmm. a lot of evidence, at least some, a lot of reptilians seem to be kind of selfish. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it just seems to me that, you know, the, the the dark force can, can goes all the way down and and um yeah i i don't know if that's extraterrestrial or actually from this planet um but uh it, it's concerning and have you heard and this is this is also something i want to talk about the ce5 uh documentary with stephen greer the um close encounters of the fifth kind 
But uh, have you heard any more about this project um, Bluebeam? Because uh, I'm almost thinking maybe that's just going to get scrapped because now this is all coming out. I don't know that they could actually pull it off. Um, you familiar with that, the Bluebeam? Yeah, the theory of the fake alien invasion yeah. or fake crisis. I yeah. mean, I, th I think the core, the core principle of that theory is that there could be a giant coordinated deception to try to pr pressure humanity into agreeing to something like a a one world government or, or some other like things like that. And I think that basic idea is still on the table. I think we we should be have our eyes open for a big deception by people. And yeah, and it it actually it uh, we didn't mention in the pre -sh in the update, but I think we have to mention the Israel uh, invasion that just happened, which has shifted the entire uh, the attack on Israel by Hamas supposedly. Uh, an incredibly brutal, violent event, and it's now drawing the entire attention of the world away from Ukraine. And it's a, it's a, it's a weird, it's a weird moment in history. Um, and it's you know, for for one, I think there seems to be a, in part of the military industrial complex that wants to fuel a continuous war machine and wants to funnel us money into they always have to have one major conflict to to both funnel money and to funnel fear and attention into and this seems to have happened at the perfect time when the ukrainian in, uh, war enthusiasm in the us is clearly uh about you know to end so i don't know it's like i i look at everything with suspicion you know what project bluebeam or global wars or weird terrorist attacks like this that seem excessively brutal and designed to trigger every emotional like response from every corner of earth mm -hmm. and to divide humanity into good and evil based on this single attack yeah yeah there's a just such a um, a movement towards this divisiveness, this contrast. I'm, I'm just seeing more and more contrast. Um, and so you have to wonder where is this going to end? But uh, yeah. I, I would advise everybody to watch this CE5 contact. Um, uh, what's it called? The con um, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind with Stephen Greer. That documentary is so amazing because what it's pointing out is that there are uh, higher consciousnesses. Okay, th this is like these kind of elevated, universal, wise consciousnesses, which he's determining to be extraterrestrials, which are um, communicating with us psychically, uh, you know, and, and their attempts to come, and they're not just non-physical beings. These are physical beings, but um, they're wanting to help us because here's the story. Back at, in World War II, when they were setting off the, um, the atomic bomb, apparently it sent out some kind of a ripple in the fabric of space time. And it caught the attention of whatever else is out there. And so they have come and determined that we need help that we are at a very delicate point in our evolution. And, uh, and so that they are on one side trying to help influence us. It's almost like a birthing process. Now we've got these, these doulas around helping to, to uh, birth our consciousness. And yet um, we have this, this secret government military complex, which has claimed total uh sovereignty for themselves over the earth and they have they don't want any interference from outside our own um our own planet and so every time there's any attempt for physical contact we you know we seem to have the military right there shooting at them and that's why they've been bringing down these crafts and back engineering them to to get more and more technology but also you know they believe they're protecting the planet and yet there's there is this opportunity for growth and uh, 
higher higher consciousness so we're, we're kind of at a dilemma because they see us as a planet that's going to kill ourselves mm -hmm. unless there's some kind of a, a help coming and or just you know like a the baby is breech you know what are we going to do we've got to we got to interfere a little bit and help uh but this could end up being staged in advance to look like a hostile alien invasion which is what the blue beam project is in order to scare everybody into one world government yeah so, so the aliens uh, these extraterrestrials as stephen greer says they're actually wanting to communicate to anybody who has uh their heart in the right place they're they're very they're standing back because they, they're not wanting to to trigger anything um yeah it it uh it makes a lot of sense to me i mean if you just if we just imagine that the uh, our solar system has many outposts on it with intelligent life, I mean, say this, our solar system actually has beings in it and we have ships flying all around it that are, um, I mean, let's just say there, even Stephen Greer, I believe, says that the Earth, that the U.S. government has like spaceships that can fly like other star systems. I mean, he claims we have a secret space force. So if let's just suppose that, that is true, then if you're an alien species that comes to our solar system, then wouldn't you, anyone flying the space force ship that says, halt, you're in the Earth solar system. We are the representatives of Earth. We are the, the military in space. I mean, what right do the aliens have to say you're not even the leader what right do they have to say we can just go to your planet and talk to your people i mean if they're out there if, if we have gatekeepers then it puts any aliens that are coming from far away from outside at a position they have to kind of respect who is wielding authority here and so they might be incredibly good and want to offer to help things they can't control whether our gatekeepers deceive us and are hiding information and, well, and then the other dimension is, are there also aliens on Earth, like living with us? I, I, that's sort of like a whole nother part of it. And have you ever heard Stephen Greer mention whether he thinks there are aliens living in Earth, reptilians or anything like that, that are not as good and nice as he is saying the more powerful aliens are? I definitely have not heard him um, talk much about reptilians uh but i don't hear him denying it i you know i i feel like he's um not focusing on that even though he might know something but uh no i don't from what i've listened to and watched i haven't heard much about that i don't think he denies it but i i haven't heard really much coming out of him about yeah it. every a lot of uh, people in this uh are skillfully avoid that topic and it's, yes. it's kind of interesting now, do you had mentioned to me before you have a, a possible uh, slideshow that you, that illustrates some stuff you want to talk about? Do you want to? Do um, but th this is much more on the spiritual end of things. Like, what is this for our own spiritual development? What are what are we um, growing or evolving into? And so, yes, I have a little. Um, it's not a slideshow, but let's see if I can. Um, Pull something up here. I hope I didn't get rid of it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Now, can you see it at all? Yep. Oh, it's down here. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's going to take a, a, a little bit to get this straight. So, we're going to just say that here at the top, can you see that, the top here? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, let's just say this is the higher consciousness. We're going to just use our imagination. So, this is the higher consciousness. So, and down here, we're going to put in another level. This here is like an ocean, the water, a big pond, right? So, or a lake. Now, if you've ever been a scuba diver, you know that um, there's different temperatures depending on the depth. As you go down, it gets colder, darker, uh, more pressure. And so, and then the, now think in terms of consciousness. 
the highest consciousness is very spacious it's elated it's um it, it's aware it knows everything okay so it's 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 everything and as you go down the pressure becomes increasing and the, the uh, disorientation gets increasingly uh, severe until you get all the way to the bottom where there's you know death and suffering and and uh, all the muck so then we'll we'll uh, look how this could also relate to vibration and for this sake of this thing we'll put it in terms of musical notes and so uh, um down here you could say is the letter c and as you go up the, the the vibration is changing the resonance is changing so this is a very a very thick resonance let me just keep going here and now uh, i'm going to bring in this so here we have the chakra system and all the way down at the bottom you have the uh the survival chakra so this is and i'll bring this in too survival and on the other side of it you have fear so fear and survival they kind of go hand in hand and then when you have all your basic needs of, to physically survive um, comfortably then you can move up into the pleasure zone right pleasure guilt and this is where a lot of people like to hang out and this is where all of our joys of living this is um you know our sexuality and the, the beauties of, of, of vision and all of our senses uh, so going on up the the chakra scale you can see how things expand and then uh, here the willpower and the shame now this is more i like to think of it as the really creative area where you can you're you're moving out into your creativity uh the writers the poets the artists um th this is kind of their 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 area of of expertise in here and moving on up so and up here we, we're not up here yet so we're still floating around in, in these chakras down here so i'm going to bring another one let's see now we've got the caduceus which actually shows the the kundalini how it rises up once it's been awakened and um, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we are talking about aliens, but you can see how this how this works, where we start in fear and we work our way up into the cosmic consciousness or the universal consciousness. And this is the name of the game. This is the game we're playing. Um, and, and when you're down here in the fear and survival mode, you, you're just it's absolute horror. It's it's the worst of the worst and then all the way up to the best of the best. So moving on up, we're going to do this now. Okay, let's say the lower three chakras, they, they touch on the heart, so they touch in the fourth chakra, but they mostly are down here in this domain, and this is the earthly domain. This is, this is humanity's, uh, you know, this is why we're here. We're playing out all of our drama down here. Without this, there would be no earth. We would just all be angels floating around somewhere. So we've got this, and then on the upper end, we've got the higher chakras, and they meet in the middle, which is right here, and that's the balance point. That's where love is. And if you have the courage to feel love, you are also courageous enough to feel the grief because they go hand in hand. So what I'm seeing here is we've got something that looks like this. So we've got Enlil, okay, Shiva, Vishnu. This is using Hindu terms, Brahma, Vishnu, uh, Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu. This is the the highest of uh, beyond all form, and then you have coming into the higher consciousness and then coming into the earth. So down here, believe it or not, this is the realm of Vishnu's um, avatars like Krishna, Ram, uh, and all these, these gods down here, which are actually incarnations of the, uh, the god, uh, or not the god, but the extraterrestrial Enki. Enlil and Enki and Anu are the same as Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. 
and um, and so and so what we're dealing with now is an extreme um, contrast. See, a lot of times these are much softer, not not so intense uh, expressions of 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 um, of life, I guess you could say. But right now we're coming into something very very um, sharp, very contrasting. And it could be that the only, a lot of people are shooting for like, oh, we got to hurry up and get to heaven or got to make things perfect uh, before everything goes to hell, <laughs> literally. But really what we want to do is we want to aim for the heart. We want to aim for the balance uh, between heaven and earth. In other words, what we are on, uh, on a mission to do is to bring heaven to earth in this portal the, this heart chakra is, is a portal and this is where the higher um, consciousness extraterrestrials are trying to speak to us from so what we have here is this this deep deep dark uh force that's pulling you know this earth you know i want to call it the the covert um military <clears throat> and uh, pulling on the our conscious now this is this is representative of the energies in our body that are being influenced right now so so these this area down here is is you can see it i mean the all over the world the wars the the terror the fear the the human trafficking i mean this is all just kind of a big nightmare more and more and more down here and yet you know we've also got incredible um you know creative things being developed uh, so so it's it's all down here but it's getting more intense and if you really want to pay attention and get quiet and meditate you can also feel that there's the same thing going on up here it's getting more and more uh, intense more and more obvious more and more accessible if if we want to work with that and my what I do is I'm I'm aiming for the heart. I'm gonna I would like to <laughs> point everybody right here, because if we just go on up into Shiva and Brahma, uh, that's fine. I mean we could just merge into the higher consciousness and be be done with the whole thing. But if we want to continue to play the game on Earth, we want to aim right here in the middle, balance, total absolute balance, bringing heaven to Earth. Um, and that involves both of these forces. And I think extraterrestrials, excuse me, extraterrestrials are very much uh, influencing um, our health and well-being in the direction of moving upward. Um, and I have another little layer here that I can put. So here, here is the path. This is what everybody can call the path. Jesus called it, what did he call it? The as sharp as a razor's edge, right? Goes straight up the middle. And that's um, that's the, also the, the Kundalini, where the energy of the Kundalini is. This is where all of the avatars are of Vishnu and Shiva. These, This is where the avatars abide. That, and they help to bring the more dramatic, say you're down here in severe survival all the way out on the edge, well, these avatars help to bring those extreme energies to the center uh, through love, and it's actually these these teachings, and that that's what helps raise it up. Like a like in the water, we can go back down. If we're sitting in the middle of a lake, let's do this. So we're sitting in the middle of a lake. Depending on where we are is the vibration that we uh that we are emitting am i am i making any sense so let me just touch base with, with you yeah Can this you... is amazing oh this is okay fascinating yeah great um so yeah when when we are having a big drama in our life we're like off balance we're, we're sort of going somewhere on the outskirts around these areas so these uh hindu uh avatars you know in india who are very well explained and i'm and they represent other i mean you can see these these uh, iconic energies not just brahma shiva vishnu or anu enlil anki it, it all, these things these uh, also show up in uh, egypt and south american um, 
descriptions of, of how things work. So everybody can do, there's a lot of information out there. Anyway, these, these uh, higher beings, I see them as these higher consciousness. They understand all of this and they, they come into the lower realms, which is the earth realm. Let's go find the earth realm. So they come into the earth realm to help to raise the energy or, or at least ameliorate or soften the transition because we're going to go through a transition and they're helping many of us to raise our consciousness so that it's it's more in the heart area. We don't have to go all the way into super enlightened, you know, sort of dissolving the ego into nothing. But if we can stay in the heart, we can soften this transition. So what transition am I talking about? Now we're going to go into the Taurus. And you can see how this matches up with, with these other images like this and this. So the Taurus, this is kind of the inside. Do you know what a Taurus is, Matt? Do you know the shape of a toroidal thing? Um, it's, yeah. I mean, I it's mean, kind I, of it like, it's shaped like a donut. So let's, let me, uh, let me make this a little clearer. Let me go here and increase the contrast. Okay. So now imagine we're inside of this big donut. Okay. Here's the donut hole goes out the top, comes around, and then back in. Okay, so this is the shape of a Taurus, the toroidal uh, energy field, which is basically what uh, Nikola Tesla um, ref somehow was using for, for energy. Uh, uh, that's beyond me. Um, but it's all, it all comes down to this toroidal um, image. So the energy comes up through the center of this toroidal thing and we you know this is the middle this is that center point where it all comes together top and bottom and we can continue out and we eventually will continue out we're going to evolve whether we like it or not and and so then we kind of go out into the ocean of infinite possibilities and eventually make our way around to do it again and that's called reincarnation uh, so the higher extraterrestrial consciousnesses are, are offering us this understanding of the process of evolution, conscious evolution that we're in, undergoing. Uh, and, and they're trying to help pull as many as they can out of this nightmare that's going on down here. Um, so <laughs> let me pause and let everybody take a breath. Um, <laughs> So let's let's just see if any, if you have a question about that. Oh, that is just uh, such a fascinating model. Um, I mean, one of my big questions are about Enki, Enlil, 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 and uh, Anu. Are are you conceiving of those as three living entities of some sort, or are they more abstract concepts? I'm going to say, and, and this, I, I want to get more clarity on it, but I'm going to say the Anu is not physical at all. In fact, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's like the, the chi, the prana, the energy everywhere. Um, and Leel, <clears throat> I'm going to say is, is, uh, is, you could call it extraterrestrial higher consciousness that takes on form. Uh, but you know, it, it, if you have, you have to think of it as a gradient, um, you know, the ones that are farther down are more and more solid. And then, and then as you move up, they become more ethereal. Um, so Shiva and Leel would be more ethereal. And as you come down, you're coming more down into the more solid 3d forms. And that would be Enki. Uh, the the god of of this earth, but not of um, you know he, he's a god of the earth. A lot would call him like the 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 Greek uh, character Pan, or you know there's just so many so many images you could use for Enki. Uh, but he was the higher consciousness that taught. Um, well, he taught us everything, math, and you know. Uh, math and language and reading and uh, 
So he, farming, agriculture, he brought all of these skills to humanity. Uh, and he feels it's, it's his duty to help this all work in harmony and, and uh, balance. But it's a challenge because the farther down you go, the more chaos ensues. So he always comes back as an incarnate form, as, as they say in uh, Hinduism, as one of the uh, um, avatars. And they're saying that, that he, may, he may be here now helping. I don't know. I don't know that much detail about all this. But this is what I'm picking up from, from the story of, of, of aliens and how they're relating and helping with the, this effort to expand our consciousness into a greater state of wisdom. Is Enki, um, are there uh, certain, uh, who have been avatars of Enki on? Yeah, I don't, well, I know, uh, let's see. I think it's Quetzalcoatl of the South America. I don't have them all memorized, but there's, there's one or two in China and, um, of course, India, you have Ram and Krishna, um, probably others. They usually present with a little bit of a blue skin, <clears throat> which I found interesting. Um, you know, Krishna and in, 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 in Hinduism is always de depicted as having blue skin as well as Ram. And uh, it, it just, for me, is an indication that, that they're uh, of a different planetary race and it could be that they're pleiadians or arcturians i don't know but it's coming from somewhere interesting and um are there uh are there avatars that represent in lil over history throughout history that I, i'm not real familiar with that 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 would be more hinduism than i'm familiar with you know i'm, I'm not a scholar in any of this i'm uh, sort of like would you say you are just kind of a learning as we go <laughs> uh, amateur i'm an amateur. amateur so uh i do think shiva has had a number of avatars but i don't i, don't, I haven't studied up on that well what about the major religious figures in like Christianity or any of those avatars? Um, yeah, I think Jesus was an avatar representing that middle chakra, that heaven on earth. This is the way to, uh, this is the way to peace. This is the way to love, you know, do what I do. And you can, you know, hang out here with me in heaven on earth. And uh, um, yes, I do think he was an avatar. I, I'm, I'm, he may be, uh, he may be one of the the Enki avatars. I'm not sure. And what about um, Prometheus? The whole story of Prometheus gifting humanity fire would that be kind of an Enki type of uh, thing? If they're yes, story? yes, that certainly does sound like it could be. Yeah, and I think Poseidon was one of the um, avatars of Enki. Um, there seem to be a number of them i should probably go go through a little research and make a list of them so yeah and okay and i have a question meditation related to this because as you have your image mapped over the chakras yeah. when you um in your meditation practice i i've heard it described many times the idea of lifting sort of your energy up through the chakras like I, i've heard the story that that's like the the, cha the process of enlightenment but you sort of, you, when you were talking about the heart chakra and the heaven on earth in the center, it sounded like you were saying something a little different than what I've heard before, this thing of literally trying to squeeze the energy all the way up and up. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people, um, and, and this is purely my own belief, uh, a lot of people seem to have to experience that state of absolute enlightenment before they they really can uh, assimilate the whole human existence thing uh and then at that point they can more easily just come right back down and hang out on the uh, heaven heart chakra Th those are called um um bodhisattvas bodhisattva P people who have 
already experienced the absolute state of enlightenment know that everything is just a, a, a game a show it's all for fun and so they choose to come down and hang in the heart and help to uh, help people who are coming up from the you know who are making the transitions um so when i meditate i i, I usually try to quiet my mind so much that i can just go all the way out but and that's a beautiful feeling i feel like the whole body is refreshed and re-energized and then just come back and it, it really does help to soften the heart <laughs> um, and then you hang out there all your relationships change life becomes more easy it really does it can become heaven on earth mm. but when you know if you're absolutely totally enlightened you basically are going to just disappear <laughs> okay so you you're saying you can lift all the way up to enlightenment and be there but you'll just fade away into the energy of the universe <laughs> yeah i mean you'll you'll certainly be recycled you know next time around. <laughs> nothing is ever lost but um but i choose this middle realm this is the heaven on earth the perfect balance the middle way uh and that's uh, that's kind of what I encourage people to to aim for if they're aiming for a spiritual experience. Let's just bring heaven on earth. We don't have to go into absolute dissolution of ego into non-existence. Why don't we just move a little bit up into heaven on earth? Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. the The picture creates a, a wonderful, really I think useful uh, map of of human consciousness and existence and and i'm a big believer in clarity and trying to map things out and transparency and i personally would like to invite any beings that are unseen that are on this map and lil enki to uh to just like openly and transparently communicate with humanity and ignore whatever um, people are somehow making it difficult for humans to see this picture clearly and yeah. see our place clearly. Yeah. I almost feel, yeah. And by the way, all of this was given to me through uh, deep insight meditation. It just came in a flash. It was just, there was no calculating or figuring. It's just, it drew on knowledge that I already had about a little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of, you know, quantum toroidal energy. I mean, just threw everything together and bam, there was this, this image given to me. So, um, so I really feel connected to it. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is this is important, and I and I think the the aliens are really wanting to help as many as they can right now, because the Earth is is potentially going to go through a, a big shift, whatever it is. I have no idea. You know, it might be an invisible shift. It could be who knows. World War Three, uh, but they're here to kind of help usher up uh more it's kind of like a harvest harvesting those who can feel it hear it and experience this higher consciousness and be in the heart and if you stay in the heart you may you may uh you may stay here on earth or you may just transcend and i don't know what that means i don't know if that means you know getting beamed up into a spaceship i don't know what it means <laughs> but they're here to help us make this transition yeah well, it definitely feels like some big, big cha change and transformation is upon humanity. It feels like we're in the middle of it. And uh, I appreciate you helping to uh, helping me just like figure and figure out my way through it and sharing your insights through this podcast with uh, our audience. Oh, this is great. So did you want to do a little quick meditation before we close? Yeah. Let's uh, what do you think about a 10 minute closing meditation? Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so I'll invite the listeners to find a comfortable position. And it does not have to be sitting straight up with your back straight. I mean, it, it's preferable just because it feels good, but you can be lying down or sitting or standing. The, mo the point is to come right here into this moment right now without uh, without a lot of 
discursive thinking in your mind. So let's listen to this bell just for a minute and follow it, help it to bring our mind into a focused state. We want to begin by just focusing on our senses, one at a time or all at a time. Let's begin with hearing. What do you hear? Maybe you hear a motor, birds, wind, cars. Take a couple of nice deep breaths and feel that breath go all the way in. You can feel how the temperature at the tip of the nose is a little cooler. All the way in to the lower diaphragm and just relax. So the sense of touch. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel your seat on a cushion or chair. Feel the clothes on your skin, the shoes on your feet. What is it that's coming in through that sense of touch, temperature, pressure? So I'll invite you to just take a minute to scan the whole body from the tip of the toes to the top of the head, just feeling whatever's there, temperature, pressure, irritation, any muscle aching. We'll just explore that for a minute. If you notice any muscle groups that feel tight, there's no need to release it, but just notice it. Almost as a curiosity. Why are those muscles so tight? Maybe the shoulders or facial muscles. And you'll notice that if you just notice just be aware of tension. Many times it will just relax. Following the breath is a wonderful exercise to help keep us present in the moment. You can always turn your attention to your breath. It's always there. This scanning meditation is a real gift to the body because the body loves to be paid attention to. You can just feel the energy in your hands And if your body wants to move, you know, rotate ahead or twist or. So what we're doing is we're clearing the mind, clearing it. Because it's only with a clear mind that we can begin to receive these, I'm going to call them packets of condensed understanding. That these extraterrestrials are offering us. 
We're being invited to understand things in a bigger way. But we have to have a clear channel for that kind of information to come through. And the way to do that is to just be present with your senses, with your breath. Breathing in, breathing out. No agenda. If something comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just resting the mind is a good practice and healthy for the body. And in the beginning, of course, thoughts are bombarding us in every direction. And so the first step is to notice it. Just notice it. That's big. That's the biggest first step, to notice that your mind has dragged you off somewhere. And then just very gently thank it, release it, and come back to the moment. There's nothing bad about thinking. It's just for this practice, this is a mental exercise of clearing the mind. And this can be done anywhere, anytime. You can always come back to your body, whatever you're doing. Washing dishes, walking from your car to the office, being present can be done anywhere, anytime. And the more the better. So with that, thanks, Matt. Thank you once again. Until next time. Have a great week.